there is uh, another similar concept called an instance initializer. So uh, sometimes people call these when they're being complete and verbose and explicit application initializer, application instance initializer. <coughs> and the clear distinction here is that the app has technically, it's booted up. It hasn't really done much, but your app instance is there. You have a container. You have a store. Uh, all of your factories are, are registered. So this is, this is where you would put code that might depend on you know, things existing. You can almost think of this as uh, being immediately after constructor logic as opposed to initializers, which are inside the constructor logic. So here you, could, you can get values and expect that you're going to get you know, consistent, reliable results. Because all of these are run after the app boots, it stands to reason that all of your instance initializers run after all of your non-instance initializers. Uh, as I said, you have a container, you have a store, you have a couple other things there. And because advance and defer readiness have to do with uh, telling the app to abstain booting until something's done, and inst instance initializers run after the app is already booted, you don't have that capability here. You just, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's too late, it's after it's already readied itself. So, uh, and, and this is a common point of confusion because there are many things you can do. So th there is a common point of confusion uh, that has to do with which of these two things do I choose for a particular task. There are many things that you might need to do that would work well in, in both. Uh, so I want to try to draw a line between you know, what belongs in thing A and what belongs in thing B. So the way I want you to think about it is that in initializers, you're really registering factories. Right? You're taking an ES6 module and putting it in a particular place in a container. You're not working with instances. You're not, uh, you're not having to necessarily deal with reading from the container and altering something. You're really just registering factories for stuff. Uh, and there's this method called app.lookup. An app, by the way, is, uh, if we go back here, this argument that's passed into this initializer function, that's, that's the instance of the application. So in this case, it's going to be your half-constructed application instance. Uh, and then when we're doing instance initializers, it is your fully constructed application instance. Uh, so you have app.lookup available in an instance initializer, which, which is what will get you a singleton object. It's what would let you uh, get access to a service without having <coughs> to inject it, right? So in thinking about how we deal with the registration API, uh, this, is, this is a basic idea of how it works. So you can see that we're importing an ES6 module and then we're calling app.register and passing two arguments in. One is the, the key. We want this factory to be stored at, you know, we want the, this factory to be stored under this key in the container. So you can put anything you want in a container. Uh, typically, you put factories in there. Or sorry, uh, typically, you put factories in the registry, and, but you can put anything you want in the container. When you look items up, by default, uh, Ember will grab that factory and it'll call dot .create on it. So you, if you have a service, for example, you would put the factory for that service, which is the, the export of that ES6 module. That will end up being registered. And then when you do app.lookup, uh, you will create an instance of that service for the first time. This is where the laziness of services comes from. You only create one on demand when you actually need it. You can deviate from that, this singleton behavior and this automatic instantiation by passing a third argument to app.register. Uh, and it just takes two options here. And this is, these are the default options. This is, this is what you get if you don't specify anything. Uh, but you can either say, this is not a singleton. I want you to give me a new copy every single time. So if you look at the way component factories are registered, 
you will see that it's singleton false. Right? Every time you ask for a component, it's giving you a new instance of that component because they are not singletons. And you can opt out of the automatic instantiation. So this would be if you registered an object into the container that is just, it's just a JavaScript object. It's not a constructor. You would want to instantiate false. <laughs> 